Okay, so today I'm going to be servicing my um, VBG on-car brake lathe, just a um, preventative maintenance service. Um, this is a good idea if they've been sitting around for a while and you're going to get it out and use it again, or even every now and then just go over it and keep it in tip-top condition. So the first thing we're going to do, and the most important thing, obviously, is the cutting head. So we're going to do that first. So first we remove the cutting head. Now that's really, really simple. Just use your, t your supplied T-bolt uh, Allen wrench and just undo the, the retaining bolt. Keep that somewhere handy so we don't lose it. And the cutting head's going to come straight off as an assembly like that. So we're going to take that straight over to our bench and service it. Okay, so first we're going to strip it all down. Uh, so the top locking wheel or nut or lever or whatever happens to be on yours assembly, take that off and the washer <coughs> and just the trim plate cover. It doesn't even need that, but it makes it look pretty. Okay. Uh, next thing we're going to take off is the the lock block. Now. So you can see it's the hole in it is offset. Okay. So what we're going to do is mark it so it goes back the same. And I'm just going to mark it top and knobs because it was facing the adjustment knobs. Put it there. Next, we're going to undo our cutting arms. Now um Obviously, there's a left and a right. They can't go upside down because of their shape, so there's no need to mark those. So we're going to undo those. And these obviously have to pivot, so uh, they're a nylock nut, so they don't rattle loose, but they don't actually have to be locked up tight, okay? So they're a half inch. Now, obviously if these nuts have been off a few times and the nylock top nylon ring is a little bit worn, you're probably going to want to replace the nuts so that the, the arms don't rattle loose and chatter. <coughs> Next I'm going to unhook the spring. Like that. Just note the position of it. The, uh, the open part of the spring faces the cutters or where the rotor is going to be. Okay. Now this is very important, these washers, these are tension washers, okay? So depending which way you want to look at them, they're concave or convex and there's, there's two of them stacked together now they should be opposite each other when they're together so that it acts like a little spring okay and that keeps tension on the cutting arms okay so when you put them back together <coughs> make sure they're stacked like this not like this. Okay, so we're going to put them next to our nuts from each side. Same on this side, the assembly is the same. Okay. Now our cutting arms are going to lift off like so. Now we can see all the debris underneath there. That's all the old swarf and rust as well from sitting around. So that's going to affect the operation of our lathe a little bit, which is why we're carrying out this service. <coughs> now, if you want to, you can also take off these the wedges that adjust them, which is what we're going to do. We're going to do a full breakdown, strip it right back. Again. 
these are side specific so you're not going to be able to mix these up so we're going to unwind them all the way off we do want to lubricate them a little bit okay but we'll get into that later <clears throat> Alright, now I'm not going to take the knobs out because all they are is just a little swivel bush. Okay, but there's, there's our unit, our cutting head, stripped back. Now you can see on the cutting head there's a lot of just surface rust, which is fine. They obviously don't get painted because you don't want paint uh, interrupting your mechanical faces and everything because we need a nice clean datum. But you can see there all this dust and rust and everything we're going to get rid of that we're going to shine this up clean it up put it back together and it's going to be good as new <clears throat> okay so we're going to start with just a dry old paintbrush or a new paintbrush only a couple of bucks sort of thing you keep in your garage anyway to clean things I'm just going to dust off the main dust out of all these threads off the plate itself off all the pivots and stops the roll pin off all the edges okay okay next we're going to hit it with some steel wool just to abrade the surface, get that surface rust off. We don't want to grind it with anything because it's a machine face and that's going to offset all our settings and the operation of our lathe. And we're just going to get in there, rub all this surface rust off. Okay, I'm going to give it another hit with my brush. Pretty nice difference, hey? Okay. I'm also going to do the underside. Underside is also very important because that's where it sits against the cutting plate. Now, hopefully, there's not going to be much on there because it sits upside down. But we're just going to make sure. <clears throat> also, going to clean our dovetail. because this makes the cutting head sit square in the machine. And again, just brush it. Okay. Now I'm just going to go over the threads with a wire brush. Just to make sure there's no debris in the threads, it's going to offset our um, adjustment of the machine. Now if you want to take these out, it's just a little circlip. And you can pull those right out. We're not going to do that today. Okay. Again, wipe our rubbish off the bench. And give that a brush with our soft brush now. finish by dusting that off with air. Okay, so there's our basic cutting head plate, all stripped down and cleaned. We're going to put that to one side now. Now we're going to focus on the other parts. First I'm going to um, do the cutting arms. Uh, I suppose they're the most important parts because they have to keep const constant tension on the rotors with the cutting bits. Uh, so first thing, I'm going to strip them right back, which rem means removing the cutting tips. So they come undone with the Allen key. Just going to unscrew these retainers, bolts, all the way out. Careful not to lose these, they're very, very small, these screws. Have 
drum is undoing the retaining screw, it's going to take some vice grips just to break it loose. So now we've got the arms fully stripped down. I'm going to give those the same treatment as the cutting plate. <clears throat> so first of all, I'm just going to use a soft brush, get any major loose debris off them. steel wool. The underneath is the most important part where they have to sit flat against the cutting plate or the cutting head plate. But we're going to make them look really nice as well at the same time. So I'll just give them a go all over. I'm going to use a sharp little tool just to clean in triangle shaped here where our cutting head goes, our cutting, our cutting tips, sorry. The amount of rubbish in here is probably indicative of how often it's been cleaned I would say. soft brush. Now I'm going to give those guys a bit of a blow with compressed air as well. Just screw the um, screw the tip screws back into the arms so we don't lose them before I put the arms away. So I'm just gonna just go in there. We're gonna put these somewhere safe for now as well. Next up, it's our wedges. So we're going to give them the same treatment. First a, a dry loose brush. Like so. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to hit the top of them with the wire brush because they're very rough cast, okay? So it's pretty pointless steel wooling them. Debris that's going to fall onto our assembly and affect the operation of it. Sweet, give them a soft brush again. All good. Now we're going to give the machine faces a steel wool. Shine. Like that. Clean our bench down. Give them a soft brush again. Hit them with compressed air. Okay, so they're ready to reassemble as well. Put them in a safe place too, we're nearly done. Now, really, the only last piece we need to clean with the steel wall and give it a nice shine up is the locking block. Okay, so it's just a machine block. 
Um, <clears throat> no real necessary need to do the top. Um, I'm going to do the sides. Let's go all over it anyway. because we're nearly done. Bring the bench down. Now our top plate. If this is damaged or anything, now is the time to fix it. So mine's a little bit bent. I'm just going to give it a quick tweak with some pliers. This is purely just a trim. Or well, I guess they probably technically call it a safety cover. and hope it doesn't melt our ink on the sticker. Like so. Alright. <clears throat> now, for our reassembly. We want to start with a nice clean bench. Nice and clean. So any of the wire, brush, wires, or the steel wool, hairs or anything, we want to get rid of all of that. Here comes our nice clean parts. Right. We're just going to assemble them with a little spray of WD-40 on the pieces, okay? That's going to stop, well, it's going to help prevent any surface rusting, but it's also going to stop any major clinging of debris in the future as well. So first I'm just going to tip it up and put some WD-40 down these bushes for the, uh, the adjustment knobs. Just work that through, like that. You'll see it come out the bottom there, we're going to wipe that off later. Okay, nice. <clears throat> now, assembly is basically going to be the reverse of disassembly, alright? So here we go, we're going to put a bit of WD-40 on the threads as well. I want them to, want them to work nice. That's lubricating the threads in them as well at the same time. So, okay, next is our cutting arms. Just going to lubricate the pivots on those. And they're going to go on like that. They don't have anything underneath them, they sit straight on the cutting plate. Okay, <clears throat> now the important part remember what we said about the washers. These spring tension washers, they're domed. Okay, so the bottom one goes on with the dish down like this straight against the cutting arm top one goes with the dish up like this okay what that does is turn those two washers into a little spring so that when we do our nut up it puts a little bit downward tension on these arms <clears throat> same on the other side, make sure you put the washers on the same way. If your cutting head's ever been apart, make sure you check these washers. Don't just put them back on the way they came off. And that's when we set the tension. So we want it so that it just can pivot. So we want enough 
tension down so that they don't chatter. So I want to feel drag, but I don't want to have to move them with a wrench. I'm going to set that finally with a spanner because I can get a lot better feel with a spanner. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to sit our tension plate on there. Top, knobs, like that. That's our locking plate. And then our spring, just going to give that spring a bit of a wipe with a rag. A bit of a spray with WD as well. Let's put a bit on this locking plate too, yeah? Now, which way did the spring go on? Open heads towards the cutting tips or the rotor. So let's pop him back on. Be careful this doesn't fly off and get lost somewhere. Springs have a tendency of doing that. <coughs> okay, so there's our cutting head basically assembled. All right, We've got our trim plate we can put on there as well. First I'm just going to work these knobs down just to touch our cutting tips like this. Like that. Now you can see what the offset in this locking plate is for. Okay, It's offset forward away from the bolts so that they don't rub it because all these bolts do is wind the wedges to bring the arms in. We don't want them actually cocking the locking plate sideways. That's why it's offset to the front to give this clearance. <coughs> Just going to check our operation. It's nice and smooth. It feels nice and snug. So I'm going to put our trim cover back on the top with a washer and our knob. Now this knob this is where I'm going to put some grease, okay, because the top is fully closed. It's not going to get dust down in the thread, but this is this needs to be locked up tight so our arms are in the position we want them. So we don't ever want that thread to get dry and strip or snap. I'm just going to put that straight in the thread for the knob. We've got any excess on the stud. Okay, now the only thing left is our cutting tips. I'm going to fit some new cutting tips because the ones that came out are in unknown condition. I don't know how much work they've done. They're also not proper VBG tips, which probably doesn't matter. But I have the proper tips here to fit. <coughs> so I'm going to put these used tips back in here because they probably do have some sides that are okay. Check that out in the future. But I'm going to go straight to my brand new Pro Cut ones. And look at that, we've got some spare screws as well. So let's take these tension, these retaining screws out. <clears throat> and we're just going to fish these brand new screws out of the packet. Do not lose them. And then some cutting tips. Now, ProCut say to position these to match up the numbers on them so you can tell when you rotate them. So we're going to use the first cutting cutting surface as one. So we're going to point them in towards where the road is going to be. Like so. <coughs> 
Okay, I'm going to put some WD-40 down the hole where the thread is because these are very, very small screws. They have to be tight and I never, ever want to snap one off. Make sure you put the tips with the numbers side or dots they are up because they're positive rake tips and that tells you which way they go. Otherwise they will not cut properly. Okay, I'm just going to tighten these little screws up firm because they're only small. And there we have it. That's our Pro Cut on car brake lathe cutting head, fully disassembled, cleaned, serviced, and reassembled. That's ready to go back on the machine. So next, we're going to service the cutting slide of the machine where this bolts on, so to make sure the operation is beautiful.